Hey everyone, again, here we are looking at the book of Ephesians in this devotional, and uh, I love this book. In fact, I did this particular study in the very early days of our church in Sydney in the early 1980s. We would hold a midweek Bible study on a Wednesday night, and we went through the book of Ephesians, the book of Romans, and the book of Mark, I think it was, and uh, we would make sure that the Word was deeply in the foundation of all that we were building as a church. We're in the third verse of Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, the previous session, we went through Ephesians 1, 1 and 2. And now we're up to verse 3, where Paul is writing to the saints at Ephesus. And he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So he starts out with worship. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we bless God, whether He's blessed us or not, but here it is because He has blessed us. Psalm 103 verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. That's a very wise piece of advice because current negative circumstances can make you and I forget about all the benefits if we let it. So to remember is an initiative, a mental practice we should take every day to induce gratitude in our soul, to give thanks to God, to bless Him for all the good things that are happening in our life. Think of at least one, two, three good things that are in your life today because of the Lord. Most of us could list a hundred things, but every day think of one or two things and thank God for those things and bless Him. So blessed be God. And you know what? It is, it is important that we understand that we can bless God. Generally, the principle is the lesser is blessed by the greater. But there's another shade of meaning to the word bless, and that is to make happy, to please. And we can please the Father if we're walking in faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. And so walking in faith and courage and confidence pleases God. Bless the Lord and all my soul and all that is within me. <laughs> that is an awesome thing. Let, let's not make worship just lip service. It, it needs to be all that is within me. My heart, mind and soul blesses God. I'm not blessing Him with this side of my mouth and cursing with this side of the, my mouth. I am, every part of me says, bless God. He is good. And I love you, Lord. We need to understand also that, that everything natural originates from the spiritual world. Dr. Yongi Cho called it the fourth dimension, that how we shape the fourth dimension, it's going to fall into and manifest in our dimension, in this physical world. Every possible blessing for time and eternity, which the Spirit has to bestow, is what the Vines Dictionary says. And it says blessing means to cause, to prosper, to make happy, to bestow blessings on. So blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Now understand this. This is why we've called the book of Ephesians, the New Testament book of Joshua, Because it talks about blessings in the past tense, but we're yet to receive them. And so appropriation is a very important word in the New Testament because it means we have a reality that has been left to us that is our inheritance, like the promised land was left to the Israelites. It's just a matter of going in and possessing it. God did, whether it was conveniently or not, I'm not sure. He he didn't actually let the Israelites know there were like 18 king and powerful enemies that they needed to conquer to take their, their possession. And it wasn't like God had just given it to them and it was waiting there. He had made sure that the biggest cities, the biggest farms, the biggest vineyards, or everything was huge in the land of Canaan. And God had made it like that so that the Israelites could go in and take it. And if they were believing God, He would assist them 
in actually possessing their land. And in the New Testament, that is exactly the same for you and I. So one of the things that, that bothers many believers is condemnation. They feel guilty. They feel their sincerity makes them feel like if they feel bad about every area of their life that, that somehow is more religious or pleasing to God than if they were to be joyful and set free. And, and so they allow themselves to feel bad about their lives and condemned about their lives and listen to preaching that was also very judgy and makes them feel uh, down and depressed. And, and so feeling like this is Christianity, this is what true religion is really like. And yet God has said, no, joy and peace is the life that I'm calling you to. And so in the land of Canaan, you might say there's these giants of condemnation that are standing on our fields of forgiveness, justification, peace. And, and we need to get rid of those giants and attack them that are trying to put us down and possess our land of forgiveness. Because Ephesians 1, 7 says, in him we have forgiveness. We have it. It's, it's part of the covenant that if we do make a mistake, we have forgiveness on our lives. And so we need to go in and possess this promised land that has already been given to us. It's the word appropriation. We need to understand that we have been blessed. It says, blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Blessing has power. I mean, when people sneeze, somebody says, God bless you. It's not like we think there's any great power in a statement like that. But actually, when God puts blessing on you, it's like a force for favor. It's a force that causes even the smallest of your efforts to become amplified and magnified. And that blessing is on our lives. And as we walk with a faith in the fact that we are blessed, not that we're going to be, but we already are. We are blessed by God. Our hands will be put to the work of inheriting that blessing. I mean, in the Old Testament, just to show you some of the power of the blessing, understand this, that once a person was blessed, it couldn't get reversed either. Numbers 23, 20 says that. What God has blessed, He cannot curse. It can't be turned around. In the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, there's a young man called Jacob, the son of Isaac. He had a brother called Esau. They were twins. And Jacob always wanted the blessing, even though Esau was born first out of the two twins. But he connived and deceived and did all kinds of things that weren't that legit and to get blessed and he pretended to be Esau his brother so that his blind father actually was fooled into blessing Jacob as though it was the firstborn as though it was Esau and it couldn't be changed it could not be altered as time passed Jacob experienced a greater blessing on his life than his brother Esau they were both blessed, but Jacob's was astonishing. And Jacob eventually wrestled with an angel and his name was changed to Israel. And he was the father of the nation of Israel, as it is today. He was so hungry for that blessing, so hungry for God's blessing to rest on his life. And so understand that it has power. Another example is when there was a king in the land of Canaan who who was nervous about the Israelites coming in and possessing their land. His name was Balak. And he hired a prophet, a prophet who was greedy for money. But the prophet had a gift that whatever he blessed would get blessed and whatever he cursed would get destroyed. And so Balak the king hired Balaam to come and curse the people of Israel. And as much as he tried, Balaam could not curse the people of God. They would offer up an offering and he would stand in a different place on the mountain. It didn't matter from which angle he tried to bless God's people, he couldn't do it. Blessed people can't be cursed. And that was a condition that Balak the prophet, the false prophet, found out about. So this blessing that pours down on our lives and is on you. If you've received Christ, you are in Him. You are blessed. And, and one of the reasons, again, that we bless God is because He has blessed us, even if our present circumstances do not tell that story. 
If our present circumstances look like they're certainly not blessed, nevertheless, faith, we walk by faith, not by sight, says, I am blessed. I have the blessing of God on my life. And eventually our circumstances will conform to our confession. That is why God has called us to speak the truth, to speak to the mountains, to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God has blessed us. And when we believe it, we're going to find that blessing begins to materialize in our lives. With every spiritual blessing, praise must constantly be on our lips for Jesus Christ and for the Father because we have every spiritual blessing there is. I mean, you just got to let it sink in. Every spiritual blessing that God can give has been given to you and I through Jesus Christ, through having Christ come into our life. And we simply praise Him for this every day, all day. Thank you, Lord, for every spiritual blessing which will manifest in every area of our life. If we've got blessings on our mind, blessings on our emotions, blessings on our, on our bodies, blessings on our spirit, blessings on our circumstances, our homes, our families, our relationships, our finances. Every area has the blessing of God on it. And that blessing will materialize in all these areas. The heavenly places in Christ, we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Well, that's the place you want blessing to originate. <laughs> we certainly don't want anything from hell. We don't want just stuff that comes from earth. We want stuff that comes from the ruling sphere of this universe, the heavens. It says we are blessed with every spiritual blessing that is, there is in the heavenly places in Christ. And uh, if we were to know that the richest person on earth had uh, made us joint account holders with them and whatever that was in their bank account was also ours, and that we could go and draw on it any time we wanted. I mean, that would be a phenomenal thing, correct? That is exactly what has happened to you and I. When we have become one with Christ, sons and daughters of the Father, we are blessed with every spiritual blessings that there are in the heavenly places in Christ. Then he moves into verse 4, where he says, just as He has chosen us, us in Him before the foundation of the world. So understand this, God chose you to be in Him before the world began. It's not like you came along and He tried to make His mind up as to whether or not you were going to make it into the kingdom. He chose you before the world began. Now this takes us into a very interesting world of predestination or not, where how does predestination work? And free will. How can you have the two coexisting in the same universe? Well, God's will doesn't automatically get done because He respects the fact that we have a will and He will not violate that. And so God has predestined that we be in His kingdom, but whether we get in there is our choice. So there's no thought at all about God making his mind up about whether he's going to receive you. He's already done that. He's chosen to have you in his kingdom before the world even began. And all we need to do is receive Christ, as John 1.12 says, to as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the children of God, the sons and daughters of God. You and I have to make that choice. And when we make the choice, we harmonize with the original plan that God had for our lives before the world began. This was His plan, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. He chose us to be holy and without blame before Him in love. So here's the thing. A lot of us would want to be holy. Obviously, that's a pursuit to live clean, pure lives before God. But not all of us are going to achieve that. I mean, I don't think any of us will achieve that. We'll be pursuing holiness as the Bible tells us to. But to one day stand up and say, I'm holy now. I'm not sure that can happen. 
But here's the thing. God has declared you holy and blameless and without reproach in His sight. Colossians 1 tells us this, that we are holy and blameless and without reproach in His sight. The way He sees you and me is very different to the way anybody else does. When He looks at you, He sees someone who's holy, without shame, without blame, and without reproach. He has made you like that because you are in Christ. He has attributed the perfect life of Jesus to you. He has imputed it to your account. And so that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, living in love. And, and that's important to note because sometimes when people get a little bit of holiness, they get very judgy. They forget that they were once really terrible too. So when we possess a little bit of righteousness, let's hold ourselves from becoming self-righteous. And that's why in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. But straight after it, He says, blessed are the merciful. Because as soon as somebody like gives up smoking or whatever, within a day, ugh, that filthy, dirty habit. I mean, they just switched from righteous to self-righteous, from mercy to judgment. And you and I need to do it the other way around. Make sure that we are still merciful, even though we might have acquired a small bit of righteousness in our lives. All blame and shame has been lifted from us. Separation from God lies at the root of all of our problems. And when we are reconnected, all of our answers lie at that same root. In that connection with the Father, it doesn't guarantee that we'll have a problem-free life, but it does guarantee that we will be able to navigate our way through everything that we encounter and find ourselves on the other side even of the valley of the shadow of death. So we receive this chosen status from God, chosen by God, before the foundation of the world. We, we accept, thank you, Lord, that I was chosen by your grace, by your mercy, by your love, right from the beginning of the world. And we were chosen with purpose, that we would be a particular kind of people to do a particular kind of job. Thanks for listening. I'm looking forward to sharing the next verses on this incredible uh, devotional out of Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, if you feel like this could help a friend, share it, leave a comment, and uh, definitely subscribe so that we will keep turning up in your inbox each week. God bless you.